WG5EEK, otherwise known as the Geek. He is going to do a presentation for us on SDR. So with that, Mike, take it away. All right. Thanks for that introduction. Yes, I am Mike, WG5EEK, and I put this together from some of the things that I like to do with uh, an SDR dongle. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this uh, presentation. So this is just a general overview of kind of where it started. So we'll just get started. Where What is SDR? So it's software-defined radio. Um, and what's traditionally done with uh, components and like hardware can now be done with uh, software. So you do have to have um, an actual dongle to do it um, or another, another device. But uh, in the 70s and 80s, actually, with DARPA and what is now Raytheon in there, their goal was to take uh, a bunch of different protocols and well, ways to communicate and combine them into a one big system, and they call that speakeasy. Uh, and originally, the goal was from, to go from 2 megahertz to 2 gigahertz. Uh, and as you'll see later on with these, um, these type of devices, we can actually exceed that with current technology for like 20 bucks up to 100 bucks, which is pretty neat. Um, and their goal was to both to do encrypted and unencrypted um, stuff. So, of course, amateur radio, we can only transmit and decode the unencrypted stuff. You can't, uh, you're not supposed to do anything that's uh, encrypted um, legally in the United States. So we're going to kind of deal with that, too, uh, what, what we can and can't do. So if we go to the next slide. So um, the kind of origins that it has... Um, I even learned about this back in the days of like the ATI all in Wonder Pro video cards that had TV capability and radio capability. It kind of spurned from that or spurred from that. We, we got these smaller pieces that were USB and you could watch TV on them. And so what they did was these guys uh, figured out a way to take that chipset and modify it to where they could expand the range of reception. Um, to go from just the, uh, the TV frequencies and go uh, pretty much wherever they wanted to. And um, with some software, it uh, really allows that to be manipulated. And a lot of these people, I wanna just want to give credit to these guys, uh, Antti um, Palisari, Eric Fry, and then uh, Steve McGrath at Osmocom. He was really some of the pioneers in this. And I, I have a bunch of links at the bottom, but um, so you guys can take a look at that at the end, but this is, uh, these are the guys that, um, I, the software that I like to use, they put a lot, a lot of things together in one website, and if you want to get started on it, it's the, really the best way to go. Yeah, so what it is is just you have this little, little stick like you see on there. I have the one at the bottom right, and um, it just plugs into your USB. It's got an SMA connector on there, and it has that chipset, that RTL2832U, and it allows the decryption of radio waves, and it's a... Uh, pretty neat. So here's the popular options. Uh, as you can see, the range on them kind of coincides with the price. So the one that's the most popular that you'll see all over uh, their website and Amazon goes for about 20 bucks, 30 bucks if you want to get the antennas with it. Um, they have some telescoping ones that you can see here, or they have fixed ones as well. Uh, but it starts off like 24 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz. And then they have some that go from like the SDR Play it goes from 0.1 to 2 gigahertz, and then the very bottom, um, I mean, it goes all the way up to 6 gigahertz. And uh, as you can see the price as you, <laughs> as you go along. Um, there's some that transmit and some that only receive. Uh, the ones you get for 30 bucks or so, they're only going to be able to re uh, do receive. But it um, depends on what your, your goal is. You can get some that go a lot better. Um, you can transmit or whatever. And a lot of people do that with a Raspberry Pi, so it's kind of more standalone. You can, uh, you can put it somewhere um, inconspicuous in your ham shack, and it doesn't take up much room. Or you can go portable with it because Raspberry Pi is so easy to move around. So let's go on and see what, well, what can you do with it. I mean, we kind of talked about what the range is. So it does all of these things. And I'm not going to read all of them to you, um, but some of the ones we're going to talk about today is you can use it as a police scanner. Um, you can monitor you know, the local... Uh, favorite radio club, which should be the, the uh, <laughs> this one. And uh, some of the things on here, they're not legal in every country. So specifically, uh, the one that says uh, decoding of pager traffic, yeah, you're not, you can't do that in the United States. So decoding pager traffic, so uh, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, the reason is, is um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of medical community that still use that, um, and it has... Um, a lot of PII or personally identification information on there you don't want, you don't really need access to. 
So I would stay away from that. Um, the website does have some of that stuff on there because this isn't just a U.S. website, but just be aware of what your local laws are. Um, so you can't do that here. But um, so some of the other ones that we can do that I'm going to talk about is the uh, decoding of um, aircraft data as they're flying over. You can see and track them as they're flying around. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, like I said, there's, this isn't even all-inclusive. This is just the main ones that you can do, which is... Uh, actually quite a bit. So the first piece of software that I'd like to talk about is the unit trunker. Um, now the unit trunker allows you to monitor trunk systems like we have here uh, in Solano County for the uh, police department, fire department, and public transit. They all kind of use the same system. Um, it's a, I believe it's a Motorola type system. And with a traditional scanner, um, if you don't have one that goes up to like 800 megahertz, um, you're not going to be able to listen to it, but you, know, you can with this one. And um, the cool thing about this is it gives you um, basically not a call sign, but it's an ID of each person that's keying up. So if you know that who that person is or if you know they're talking to the dispatch, you can kind of type in and say, I know this is dispatch. So when it pops up, you'll see later when we demonstrate it that it has like the name of who's talking, which is pretty neat. Um, and the other thing this does is you can route the audio to another piece of software called DST Plus, and you can then decode like P25 or DMR, all those digital type um, things that you would not be able to get on a normal cheap scanner that costs 100 bucks. Those scanners usually range from $350, $500, um, and you can do the, all this with this $20 dongle and the free software. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty neat that you can do that. And the author on this, um, he hasn't updated his website since 2015, and he was a ham. Uh, it says expired. I looked in the FCC website, and I don't know if he just let it, let it lapse, but I couldn't find any inf other information except for um, basically his name is uh, Ricky Parrish. So thankful for this software that he put out there, and it's free. So if you guys want to do this later, and I'll kind of demonstrate it, but if you, if you get this software and you want to know how to use it, it's a little daunting at first um, to set it up. But once you plug it in, install it, you have to make sure you select your device, which is on that line highlighted there. That's the mistake I made. I, I thought it was like, oh, it shows it at the top. No, you have to actually pick your device, which should be the only one on the drop down when you click on it. And then the fault um, it comes with is three, um, basically, receivers. Um, and you want to set that to two. All you do is just change that number right there where it says VCOs two, VCOs, it'll be three, but you got to change that. Um, and then we'll see the next page was where you got to figure out what your control frequencies are for the system you're trying to listen to that's trunked. So if you go to radioreference.com, you go to you know California, Solano County, or wherever you're at, um, you could find the system that says trunked. So this one is a uh, is a trunk system, and that lists all the frequencies that they use. However, not all of those are going to be the ones you put in the to it. You really only need to put in one that works, and if you see, it says red is the primary. So the first one we would try would be 853.2125, and that's the control. What the control does is tell the system which channels you're going to use or which frequencies you're going to hop around on. Um, and, the only, and with this system here locally, that seems to jump around quite often. I notice around midnight it seems to jump um, to a different one. I'm not sure if it changes more during the day because I'm not home, but I know every night at midnight, if you have a, a traditional scanner, that doesn't have control channel tracking, you'll just hear this garbled mess of, of the data telling the, you know, the control or the other radios that are programmed what to do. Uh, but with this software, I believe it'll, it'll find the next one automatically as, as well as if you have an expensive scanner, it'll do that too. But, so we need, the, we need one of those control channels to put in. Um, and if, as soon as it finds one, it should, next time it switches, it should transfer over. If it doesn't happen, just be aware you can always go back to the website and, and grab them. So you're going to want to mute the first tab because that's going to be your control channel. And all you do is hit where it says mute, where the arrow is, and then change your parked frequency to your control channel. And then you want to select all of these modes that this software can decode, which, um, as you can see, it's quite a bit. It's just regular analog, P25, Pro Voice, um, Motorola and several others that aren't in use very much. I know the, the last one there, MPT1327, uh, is used by PG&E um, for some of their stuff. So I just check them all. It doesn't hurt you to, ch uh, to do any of those. 
And then, like I said, the chase is the one that may not work, but I believe it does. Um, you just Your results may vary. you got to check it out. But discover right there is just for discovering which mode, but I, if you just select all of them, it'll, it'll just work automatically. And then for the second one, the only thing you have to do um, is you want to unmute your audio to actually listen to the transmissions, and then just make sure all the other X's are checked as shown, and then it should work. It's pretty easy. And then what happens, well, when it, when it picks up the, the control channel, it'll pop up this window, and it should auto-populate um, kind of the band plan for their, their system. But um, since we're a rebranded system, um, or rebanded, I should say, um, you have to click on this right here, the calculator, and just choose the, where it says rebranded. Or re, yeah, rebranded. So and it, it'll change them all to green. It's pretty easy. Um, there's, and this is how, like I said, if you really want to go into the details and, and manually set all this stuff, you can. There's a way to do it with in this, inside the software, but if you already know what you're wanting to change, it's, it's kind of faster to do it this way, but you don't have to. This, none of this, this is just optional. If you want to say, hey, I know this is the police department or this is the transit system or the fire department, that's where you can, you can change it really quickly. So I have a little video that should show you kind of how, how it works. <laughs> Medic and truck 74, so under 620 Saratoga Court for a medical back clear at 1525. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The audio is pretty good for 20 bucks, I would say, and free some, some free software. Uh, this is the, my favorite software to just kind of figure out what is going on um, on the bands. So this is SDR Sharp. And as you can see, I have it tuned to our, uh, this is actually my DMR hotspot that I've, um, support, supports all the, the normal bands you would, you would see, uh, wide band and narrow band FM, upper lower and dual side band, and then carrier wave. And it, can, it has all these plugins you can add to, if you want to figure out what a PL tone is or your digital squelch, you can do that. Um, it has plugins for doing another radio scanner, but I prefer to use Unitrunker because most things around here are going to be if you really want to pay attention, it's trunked. And then the uh, there's plugins for everything. If you want to, um, it even has a built-in DSP, which was what we talked about to decode. You can you can call it from that, and it does it. You just hit start, and it does it. So it's a lot of cool stuff on here. So I'll just do a quick little demonstration. This was. Eight, uh, barring none, uh, this is the W6 VVR roll call, as follows. WD6 BQX, art. This is WD6 BQX, no traffic, uh, good evening. But as you can see, it was decoding the uh, the transmission, the signal, the 127.3, okay. the tone, so. 6 GF, Greg. You get a nice, really cool waveform to look at, so you can see how good your signal looks. And so, I mean, this kind of looks kind of daunting, but um, it's pretty easy to set up. It's very similar to the other one, you just install the software, and the drivers that go with it, and you pick your particular flavor of uh, uh, USB device, and you're mostly ready to go. Kind of, there's not, there is a lot of tutorials out there. I don't want to go through all that, but you get more out of it if you just play around with it. And if you ever mess it up, you can just start over and reset everything. Um, but there's there's so many different options. You can change the color of the, of the waterfall if you don't like that. If if you have trouble seeing it, and you can, there's lots of audio filters. You can you can change out. Um, the way it sounds, and if you've got a, a station with a lot of static, you can kind of remove some of that. So, so we talked about decoding um, some of those different digital modes like P25. So the software that you need to do that, the main one that does it is DSD Plus, and there's a free version out there that's kind of limited. It doesn't really get a lot of updates regularly. Um, specifically, I don't believe that the free version can do Fusion. Um, but you can pay, like, I don't want to say it's like $30, and you can get a lifetime license, and they do about monthly updates, and they're adding more features, and it was worth it for me because I do a lot of listening. Um, and, the, and the other one you need is a virtual something audio cable. What it does is it allows you to um, output your audio to basically a virtual device, a pretend device, and then you can route your stuff through there so you're not listening to all the, the digital scratchy that you would hear and, and you can 
mute that one, but the software will decode it and output it um, back to where you can hear it. Pretty straightforward. You select your device. You don't, don't select to listen to it because you don't want to hear it. Otherwise, you're going to hear only the, uh, the digital part, which you can't understand. Um, and then it'll look like this when it's decoding. And as you can see, this one is for um, DMR. You can see on the right-hand side, it's, it's decoding DMR. And then it will record all the different talk groups and radios that it sees. Um, and then you can kind of look at that in a file. And you can um, basically, if, if you're trying to set up a new system that you want to monitor, you can, you can pick out key ones that you want and ignore the other ones that you don't want. Um, so that's kind of neat. And I think I have a video of that. And I'm going to warn you right now, the video is kind of, um, I was maxing out my processor because I was recording and decoding at the same time. So it won't sound as good um, as it will on yours, um, just because I was overtaxing my system. To each other. So this is Claus standing by for third party traffic. And his crowd, whoever they are, in New York. Okay. We just happened to catch Mrs. Claus as she was trying to talk to some uh, some kids. So. Hi, Mrs. Claus. My name's Monica, and I'm seven years old. And where do you live? Um, Riverhead, New York. Riverhead, New York. Over. Over. All right, Grandpa. We're dead. Uh, talking, Monica. Years old and lives in New York. Learn how to use the ham radio. Do you have a message for the Monica? And as you can see at the bottom, it was showing their call signs and everything that you can you can watch, so you know who's who is actually transmitting. But um, like I said, when it when you're doing it at home, it'll sound better because so, um, not recording at the same time. Is, um, from Sarah. From Santa. Have you been a good girl? Yes. What did you do that was so good this year? <laughs> Help with my brothers. Nice. That's awesome. What a big girl you are. See, back to you, Mrs. Claus. Back to you, Mrs. Claus. Over. Over. But I just thought that was really cute to capture that. So, um, And like, with that software, um, the SCR Sharp, if you want to record things as they come in, you can. there's, there's a plug-in you can, you can set up to where it will only record when it receives a signal. Um, so if you're trying to capture something and you don't want to be there all the time, you can you can do that. So this is the uh, the last piece of software that I'm going to show you, um, and it's just very brief because it's there's it's not very I would say pretty to look at, but I mean it's just useful information. So this is the RTL 1090, um, and what that does it uh, it it will allow you to pick up the transmissions from aircraft as they're flying over, um, and that's that stuff is called ADSB Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. Um, and it gives basic information like tail number, call sign, uh, altitude, speed, location, and where it's going. So, um, and this one's really easy to do. You just um, install it, and the same thing. You just plug in your um, your latitude and longitude, or you can manually drag the map around so you find where you're at, and it just displays it right there on the screen. And all, like I said, all this stuff is free. Um, this one. Um, I couldn't find that this specific individual wrote this, but he owns the company that this where I got it, and it says he's a software engineer, so I figured that was 90% sure that was him. Um, software available for PC, Mac, Linux, so if you don't have a PC, don't, don't feel like you're going to be left out. There's stuff available. Um, if you have an Android phone, um, there is an app that you can get. There's actually a couple different apps. Uh, this one's kind of cool. So if you don't have one of these dongles, you can still kind of use SDR online um, because there's people out there that just have these online for you. They're servers, and they you can just pick them up, and you can do HF, all sorts of stuff with it. And I thought that it was pretty neat. So the website's up there. Um, I don't think I actually put the link until the till the end, but uh, if you see on the bottom, it tells you what um, frequency bands that that individual server you can listen to which I thought was pretty cool. So you, you'll know ahead of time what they have available instead of trying to guess. Yeah, and I got a little bit of a demo with that one too, a little video. And I was kind of slowly, manually tuning it in. And this is 
Bruce. And I can hear you, Kevin. How's it going? Going pretty good. The band's okay. Now. Usually you're slamming in here. I'm only using about 90 watts. That's all I got. I don't have the amplifier hooked up. So. Hopefully you and uh, Mike are hearing okay. Over. So as you can see, um, I believe the server um, is set up in Half Moon Bay, um, and there's 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 stuff all over the world. Uh, there's a little map you can pick to work where you want to listen to, um, but I, it works pretty good and it's it's free to use. And you can do this on your phone, you can do this on your computer. Just need an internet connection, uh, and that's the only downside with this. You don't need an internet connection if you want to do local, but if you want to listen to some of these other words, then you would need an internet connection. Um, and then, like I was saying before, I kind of jumped the gun, but if you have an Android phone, I'm sure they have this for Apple, too. Um, but there's um, an app called Android Pocket RX TX. And the reason it's called TX is because you can actually hook it up to some of your more expensive radios that's out there, like iCom, and control it from this. But you can also just use it as a, as a web SDR. And like I said before, it needs the internet. Um, but it works. Very similar, you just punch in your frequency that you want to listen to. Um, you might have to select the mode um, because it doesn't know what, where you're at. But I've got a little demonstration of that too. And just to recap, these are all the things that you can do with the uh, SDR6. It's 20 bucks for this particular one, and then 10 bucks more for the antennas. Or if you have an antenna already, you don't really need that. But if you want to go portable, um, 10 bucks is not bad to spend on three different antennas with a mag mount. All right, so just double click at the start, and then we might have to go back to the. Um, we'll see if this control frequency works. But as you see here, it says park. That was our control frequency from the radio reference website. So we'll see if it works. If it does, it should pop up. Um, if it doesn't, we'll probably have to change it to a different. So we'll try the 853.2125. So we'll stop it. We'll type it in here. 0.2125. And we'll see if it works. Nope. Like I said, you got to try them all. So that one doesn't seem to work. And like I said, the c the control channel will change. That's why they give you multiple ones here, because they they do cycle through. Five two point two hundred. There we go. It was that one. So as you can see, it pops up with the signal. This is your signal level up here, where it has the green, um, and we're already getting people either keying up or coming online. Um, not sure if the audio is. Yeah, it just they just might not be transmitting. Take it one away. So this is the, the Vacaville PD. It could it's Vacaville, Sassoon, Fairfield Police Department, Fire Department, and Public Transit. Wow. It, they're all on the same one. Um, there is a way to go in there and limit what you want, but you have to know who's who's the talk groups and who's talking. So you can kind of figure it out if you listen long enough. Code four. Copy code four. Yep, Twenty bucks. Uh, you get a digital trunking scanner that works pretty well, I think. Um, and this is what I was talking about with the the rebranded. So there's different um, bands, uh, plans that are in use around the country and around the world. So you would just pick up here and say rebranded, and then it'll turn all these random ones into this one, which is the ones that we use. And if you look, that should match what was on radio reference. And I believe it does. So, works out. Uh, I paid thirty dollars for my dongle. Um, I got it on Amazon uh, about a year ago, and it comes with the USB device. That's uh, this one called uh, New Elect, and has the antenna. And then the base here, the antenna will actually disconnect. It just unscrews. And then in the package, it came with two more that, but they were they were fixed and fixed linked antennas. 
Uh, with this one, you can kind of move it around and figure out what you want. But you don't have to use this. If you already have an antenna uh, on your roof, you can kind of just hook that up. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I've got the links here at the end. Um, you guys can either take a picture or we can send it out. All right. Well, thanks for uh, letting me show you that. I really appreciate All right, it. Mike. Give a round of applause for Mike, the geek. It's in his call sign. Thanks, Mike.